Friday. I'm Deirdre Fitzpatrick. It feels so good to Doesn't hear that. It? Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It is Friday. I'm Mike Terry. I'm filling in for Teo Torres this morning. Let's get right to meteorologist Dirk Verdorn with a look at your forecast. And happy Friday to both of you. We've got conditions that are looking pretty nice. Sun's just under the horizon, but we're getting that nice orange glow this morning as we take a look from downtown Sacramento. Just love that view of the city and of the sun coming up. And so it's going to be a sunny day today, so expect plenty of sunshine, not much in the way of cloud cover. Temperatures are going to be warming up. We are looking at temperatures that should be maybe a degree or two warmer than we were yesterday and more mild nights with temperatures dropping off into the low 60s as we head into the early morning hours. So that's kind of the trend we're going to be looking for today and into the weekend. Temperatures right now ranging 58 degrees in San Francisco. That's where the coolest air is. Get 60 degrees in Fairfield, 61 Sacramento, 60 in Stockton. So we are feeling the influence of that onshore flow coming in from the coast. It's just not as strong as it has been. 12 mile an hour wind. That's all we have. Calm conditions currently in Stockton and Yuba City as well as Truckee and Lake Tahoe. Not a lot of wind out there. Your day today will be warming up 9 o'clock 65 by noontime 81 degrees and we should see temperatures peaking at about 4 or 5 o'clock or so around 93 degrees. That's what's going on with the weather. Now let's check out traffic with Brian Hickey. Yeah, I thought we'd check out the sunrise from one of our Caltrans cameras here and you can see out through uh, Watt Avenue there looking good as you make your way in on that westbound ride getting right through the uh, entrance into the Fix 50 project there. So far, not seeing any major delays on the westbound side. We do have a minor delay, though, on the eastbound side. We've got a minor collision there, and that is slowing things down just a little bit before you get to 65th Street. So keep an eye on that one for you. But the westbound ride, no issues there. Northbound I-5, just north of the airport at the Vietnam Veterans Bridge. There's a vehicle blocking the number two lane, getting a tow truck there to clear that scene. But we are seeing a little bit of slowing in that spot as well. 5 and 99, no issues from Elk Grove into downtown, incident-free there. Stockton continues to be incident-free and on Highway 4, looking good off toward the Bay area. If you're heading to the Bay Area on Interstate 80, 14 minute ride between Vacaville and Fairfield right now. Westbound 205 to the Tracy Triangle, 17 minutes, 580, a 27 minute ride. And here in Sacramento, no delays, Mike. All right. Thanks so much, Brian. So new this morning, Sacramento Metro firefighters responded to two big fires overnight. Start flowing water through those stud opening up there. Up. Hey, Ziegler, Ziegler, we're going to do water in the, the window up here. Crews had their hands full with a fire that engulfed a building in the McClellan Park. This happening just after midnight in a commercial building that was attached to the Lions Gate Hotel. A second alarm was called as firefighters worked to prevent it from spreading into that hotel. The building was under renovation, so no one was inside. The cause is under investigation. And about 45 minutes later, Metro crews in the Art and Arcade area responding to this fire in a home on Winding Creek Road. It was a large one story ranch style home, had a pool in the back. The fire was in the kitchen area, damaged the central part of that home, but crews were able to save the remaining uh, rest of it. There was a lot of damage. Thankfully, no one was hurt and the cause is under investigation. We're also following a developing story this morning at American River College. The school suddenly announced that it has to shut down one of the largest buildings on the campus starting today because of safety concerns. KCR 3 is Aaron Haft out there at the campus now with that sudden shutdown. Mike Deirdre, unexpected and now displacing hundreds of classes and offices. Davies Hall was suddenly deemed structurally unsound and as of this morning will be closing. You can see late last night staff quickly moving out of the building. This after the Division of State Architects notified the college that Davies Hall could be at risk of catastrophic damage in an earthquake. This campus, a large ripple this causing a large ripple effect on campus as now more than 80 offices will need to be moved and the college will need to find classrooms elsewhere on campus for 200 courses. The college's president Lisa Cordoza says about 6,000 students will be impacted and will temporarily go to virtual learning. The health and safety of our of our employees, of our faculty, our staff, and our students is so important to us. And we, given the information that we had, we had to make this difficult decision. I'm not sure what's going to happen with everyone in it. I know they have to displace everybody, but that's all I know. We had to make the very difficult decision to shut down the, the building as quickly as we could. You're taking a live look at Davies Hall this morning. It's a lift slab construction, which means the floor and roof slabs were cast and then lifted into place and connected to either concrete or steel columns. Those decisions were approved of prior to the construction of Davies Hall, and that was way back in the early 1960s. But as of this morning in 2023, the building will be closing.
in Sacramento. Aaron Haft, KCRA 3 News. All right, Aaron, thank you so much for that live report. And new this morning, the Department of Corrections is looking for an inmate who walked away from a facility in El Dorado County. Take a look. There's this picture right there. Officials say Jared Taylor was last seen at the Growlsburg Conservation Camp in Georgetown around 530 last night. He was not seen during the seven o'clock count. Those again are two photos of him. One with facial hair, one without. The Highway Patrol and local law enforcement have joined in the search for Taylor, who is described as being six foot two, 226 pounds, with blonde hair and blue eyes. He was serving time for second degree robbery in Fresno County and scheduled for release in April. Anyone who sees him should contact the camp. Well, this morning, South Lake Tahoe police are going to continue to investigate a death in a public area. Police say that a woman's body was found in the Lakeland Village development just after midnight yesterday. It's just off of Lake Tahoe Boulevard. Now, South Lake Tahoe police say someone found that woman lying unresponsive in what they're calling a common area of the village. Department says that they're not calling this a suspicious death right now. And police told us that the woman was from Southern California. They believe that she was staying in one of the properties out at Lakeland Village. The woman's identity at this point has not been made public. The coroner is working on contacting her family. In Marysville, police have arrested a 70 year old man on torture charges. Police say that he doused a 59 year old woman's hand in hand sanitizer and then lit her on fire. That woman suffered serious burn injuries. Juan Carlos Medina is now facing charges of torture, mayhem, arson, and domestic violence. Just a few hours ago, uh, there was a second show announced in Sacramento. Country star Zach Bryan then just a few hours after that was arrested after a run in with state troopers in Oklahoma. Brian was arrested yesterday northeast of Tulsa on a charge of obstruction of an investigation. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol didn't give any details specifically on what happened, but Brian did issue an apology on X, formerly Twitter. He said emotions got the best of me and I was out of line in the things I said. I support law enforcement as much as anyone can. I was just frustrated in the moment and it was unlike me and I apologize. Brian's going to be performing at the Golden one center on November 29th and 30th of 2024 with the second show added yesterday because the ticket sold so quickly for a first show. President Biden will be arriving in India this morning for the G20 summit and ahead of that he'll meet with India's prime minister. KCR 3's Amy Liu is in our Washington bureau with more on the goal of this trip. Well, this is really President Biden's moment to show the world why the U.S. is a reliable and trustworthy economic partner, an alternative for countries to turn to instead of China. En route to India and Vietnam. I think they both want much closer relations with the United States, and that could be very helpful. President Biden is appealing to world leaders, offering U.S. investment in developing and middle-income countries. He's already asked Congress for additional funds that we could contribute to the World Bank that could lead to loans of up to, uh, loan capacity of up to $25 billion. Biden will be meeting with India's prime minister following a state visit to Washington. The U.S. sees India as a counter to China, trying to grow its regional influence and military. India thinks that because of its growing heft, the fact that it, it isn't seen as a destabilizing force like China, that they can provide a valuable voice for the developing world. President Biden expressed disappointment over China's president skipping the summit where the two met last year. There without President Xi is an opportunity, I think, for President Biden to shine a bit more, maybe cast a light on some of China's aggressive moves recently. Also missing from the summit, Russia's President Vladimir Putin, whose war in Ukraine also poses a challenge for the G20 members. They may not necessarily agree on the issue, but all are feeling the impacts of the war. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, KCRA 3 News. And following the G20 summit tomorrow, President Biden will be visiting Vietnam on Sunday. The nation's largest gathering of Asian American and Pacific Islander leaders continues today in Sacramento. The AAPI Leadership Summit features more than 250 lawmakers and community leaders at the Sawyer Hotel. They're focusing on major issues impacting the AAPI community. The event wraps up today with panels hosted by lawmakers from across the nation. A little later this morning, Representative Josh Harder is going to be doing a town hall with several veterans health care leaders in San Joaquin County addressing the PACT Act and veterans benefits. They're going to answer some questions on current veterans health benefits and also navigate the VA health system as well as current legislation that's moving through Congress to address a physician shortage. It's happening at the VFW Veterans Center in Manteca. It all starts at 11. 
A highway patrol is aware of two promoted sideshows expected to happen this weekend in San Joaquin County. CHP says there are two events that they're hearing about, LA to the Bay and Cali versus everyone. CHP is warning people do not attend those sideshows. Officers and the county street racing task force will be ready to impound cars and arrest drivers as well as spectators. There'll be dozens of extra officers on duty.